morning. Hey, kids, I, I, I was glad to play that game, Rock, Paper, Skizzers. Rock, Paper, Skizzers. I love playing that game. Uh, I say the word skizzer because I cannot pronounce the word scissors, and so I, I call it skizzers because I can't say the word scissors, and so I, I, that's the reason I say it skizzers. You, some of your kids understand that maybe? I don't know. This little girl standing up, she might get that for me. So, uh, hey, it's good to be back. It's good to be back in Tompkinsville. It's good to be back at First Baptist Church. Uh, uh, we, we enjoy coming here. We worship when we come here. Amy and, and, and Chris do such a great job, and others along the way just do a great job. And that, Actually, that's Andrea. Okay. Okay. We, we had, we had, uh, Amy had a sick child. Just, it happened this morning, and Andrea. Did. Andrea. Well, I'm glad you made, made yeah. Well, <laughs> And I like I like what you dropped in there earlier, a little Christmas action. Was that was that true? No? Okay. Yes. I like what you did there. I like that. Did y'all catch that little Christmas moment there? So hey, it's it's good to be here. And it's you know, it, it good job getting here. I mean, it's it's a big deal to get here. And I say that I said that last week, and I say that every time I go to meet with a team or a, a group or somebody. I mean, you had so many other things to do. You could have not been here today, but you came here today. And, and we've already done what we, one of the things we wanted to, to, to do, right? We've, 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 we've worshipped. Did you catch that? I mean, I, I was listening, and you guys are singing out, and it's sounding good. I'm, I'm being inspired. I'm being fired up. I, it's, it's encouraged me just to be in the room today. And so thank you so much for being here. Good job getting here. It could have been, uh, you know, some, something else. Now, now I'm, I'm, on, I'm on sabbatical is, is what I'm doing right now. I'm on a sabbatical right now. And, and I ended up driving a school bus while I'm on sabbatical. So, so I, I'm, I'm doing sabbatical on the school bus. So I drive the school bus. And, I, and I've decided I'm going to write a book. I'm going to write a book about the school bus. And here, here's some working titles. Here, here's some working titles about the book on the school bus. Here we go. Lessons from the school bus. You, you know there's lessons to learn from this. Anybody ride the school bus ever? Anybody? I mean, did anybody have a bad experience on the school bus? Anybody have a good experience? We hopefully both. My wife has a couple bad ones uh, she, she's told me about. Uh, I'm going to do my best not be the driver to let that happen. So uh, COVID-19 in the school bus, there's another one we're going to work on. Hey, help, help me with this one. The wheels on the bus go, that, that's, no, that's probably taken, but I, I, may, I may try to use it anyway. And then, and then uh, everything I ever needed to learn, I learned on the school bus. It, it's, it's truly an opportunity. I look in those little faces and I see those mask up little kiddos and I just can't wait. And I'm telling them every day, today's the day you get to be your best. You get to, you get to go in this school right here and they're going to teach you stuff and it's going to make you amazing. Everybody with me? And they're going like, <laughs> it's, it's eight o'clock in the morning, Dave. So last week we talked about this family we met. We talked about this question we had, how did I get here? And we talked about that. We talked about Joseph and his, his brothers and his family. And they pretty much just pushed him out. They betrayed him. And, and, and yet Joseph never really asked that question, you know, of, of, of why me? Why this happened to me? He, we never have any indication of this. Uh, we talked to, I, I talked about the, the intake process at the juvenile detention center and how sooner or later we asked these kiddos, why are you here? And we're hoping they will come up with the answer that I'm the reason I'm here. Because until they take responsibility. But then we also, we went on to say that, that there's times when you are at, not at fault at all. And someone else has encountered your life and caused you to have these troubles and these trials. And it was all their fault. Wasn't your fault at all. And we, we understood that, that sometimes the reason I'm here is somebody else's fault. And, and how, how do we react to that? How do we deal with that? Well, here's, here's some ways that we react to that. We act out. We get stuck. Have, have you ever had something happen to you and it changed your life for a lot or a little? And you just, you just act it out. Our kiddos get that. We, we act out or we act in. We suppress it. What about we become bitter or we blame others or we sulk or we cry or we yell or we make terrible choices? These, these are all ways that, you know, when somebody else does something to me, this is the way I act. The, I give up, and, I, and I'm definitely ready to give up on God sometimes. Anybody identify with that? Anybody identify with the journey you're on, and you look up and you say, man, I'm not sure, I'm okay. 
what non-believers need to know and what, what believers need to know and remember is, is that nothing gets to us. Now, now stay with me here. Nothing gets to us that it doesn't come through God. Man, now you think about some things you've heard about and some things you've witnessed and some, maybe some things you've had. And Joseph, things he had himself. Nothing got to him that it wasn't of God. Do you remember, do you remember God having a conversation with the devil? And he was talking about his servant. You remember this? You remember God bringing up, hey, hey, uh, Satan, have you considered my servant Job? God just brought it up. Would God have the, the moxie enough to offer you or me up? Would, would he throw your name in there? Personally, I'm not really wanting on that list, to be honest with you, because sometimes it might just roll me over. But, but here Job was offered up by God, and you know what happened after that. His wife just fell apart, his world, his family, and he just went all, all, to, all to the ends of it. It was so simple that he had this thing, but, but we, we, uh, he, God said, Have you considered my servant Job? Has God considered First Baptist Tompkinsville? Has God considered you to be the catalyst to take things to a different place? Uh, Stephen Covey wrote this book. You know this book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And do you remember what number one is? Number one is begin with the end in mind. Somewhere along the way, Joseph got a hold of what was at the end. Somewhere along the way, we need... As individuals, we need as a church to begin to think about the end and not just the now. Because we're stuck right now, aren't we? Look at us. We have on masks. We can't shake each other's hands. We don't know whether to offer a hug or not. I mean, we're in a weird place. Could we realize that there's an end out there that all this will play through? Do we, do we want to realize that? And so when, when we look at the end, I want us to jump into a, a, a piece of scripture here. Genesis 45, 5. And I think some of the, the, the habit of this church is to stand for the reading of Scripture. So why don't we do that today? I didn't do that last week, but I think that's normal for us, right? So let's do that. We're just going to read this one verse, this one verse for the reading of Scripture. So in Genesis 45, 5, it says, And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> Can we realize that God is sending us somewhere? He's taking us somewhere in the midst of our mess. In the midst of our mess. Can we find the message that others need to see and hear? See, what we're going to discover today was there is something that needed to happen in Joseph's life. <clears throat> Our sermon title today is, is, I don't know why I'm here. Last week we asked, why, am I, why are you here? This week I want us to consider, I don't know why. You know what could be the worst answer to the question, why are you here? It's for you to say, I don't know. Now think about that. That's true in any situation. Why are you here? Those, those kids at the juvenile detention center, if they truly, it wasn't a game and they weren't just playing, if they truly didn't know why they were there, that would be, that'd be horrible. If we don't as the church, as we don't as individuals, as disciples, as believers, if we don't know why we're here, man, it's just not going to, we're not going to get anything out of this thing called discipleship. Others won't come to know God because of us. If we don't know why we're here, why we're here and why we're uh, God's people is a big deal. It's the hugest deal ever. Why are we here is, is that we need to remember that we're on mission for God. That we're in His grace and on His journey. The truth is that we, we, can't, we can't be God's people on mission if we don't understand why we're here. So have you really thought about that? Our kiddos in the room. And are not so, not, not so young folks, all of us. What do we do with that? Do I have a, a vision every day? Do I get up and put my foot on the ground and say, I don't know why I'm here? Or do I get up and say, man, I know why I'm here. I'm here to help somebody get it that Jesus loves them. I'm here to help somebody get it that their journey matters to me. And that I see them struggling. I see them hurting. 
Can I just send them a text? Can I just send them a word? Can I just say, man, I see you, and I see where God's working. I want you to not forget that you have something special you're doing for God. Now, it may not be this big, huge, out in front newspaper article kind of thing. It might be something very quiet. It might be mentoring someone on the school bus. It might be helping a neighbor. It, may, it, it could be, it, it's going to be the thing that God has already equipped and, and, and got you ready to do. So let's look at Joseph's life. This guy, this Old Testament Joseph we're talking about. Joseph was betrayed by his brothers. Why am I here? My brothers. He walked down to Egypt. He was enslaved. He, 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 his demise and his death were lied about to his father. Can you imagine? His legacy ends with a lie. His brothers say, oh, he's, he's, he is no more. He's gone. He was sold into slavery twice. Potiphar's wife lied about him. He had charge of everything in Potiphar's world except his wife. And his wife was the end of him. He was, he was lied about. He was put in prison and forgotten for years and years. And then as the cupbearer exited, he said, hey, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell your story. I'll help you out. It was two years later before we had another dream and another situation. And the cupbearer all of a sudden had a vision and said, oh, I remember now. That dude in prison, man, he, he, he interpreted a dream for me. Let's see if he can help you. Somewhere in this mess, in this totally messed up world that we're living in, Joseph had to figure out why he was there. Now, where was I? I, can't, I couldn't stop this week thinking about Chris's comment. Do you remember Chris's comment at the end? I asked for some, some input there, and he, he, he had his comment. He said, I wondered how long it took for Joseph to, be, to understand he'd been sold out. I just couldn't get over that. That's why I wanted to do some comments. He couldn't get over thinking about when, when Joseph, re- oh, they're, they're not going to leave me here. Come on, those are my brothers. I am my father's favorite. They will all, this is a joke, right? I'm being punked here. They're going to show up and it's just going to be a big ha-ha, we're just kidding. No. At what point did he finally turn his heel and stop looking backwards and say, I'm going to Egypt. This is for real. I, I'm, I'm a slave now. These people are speaking a language I don't even know. He didn't speak that language. He had to learn that. And so here he is going along. And so the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered and lived in the house of his Egyptian master. And when his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, that's in in 39.2, 39.2 of Genesis. At some point, Joseph just kept doing the thing he was in. He was still a slave. He, did, did Joseph spend any time praying, get me out of this, God? Just, just release me from this. Have you ever prayed that prayer? Because I have. I have. I've prayed, man, I don't like this, God. Just move me on. Get me out of this. Surely this is not your will for me. But Joseph, as he was a prisoner, as he was lied about, he, as he was betrayed, as he was put, forgotten in prison, all that stuff going on for how many years? 20 Years. Now, I don't know how old you are, but I know how old I am, and I know how old I'm going to be in 20. I'm going to be 20 more. So yeah. 20 years he had to deal with this, and yet the Lord was with him. Another piece of scripture it talks about, and even the household he was in prospered. So they wanted Joseph around because, hey, this dude, not only is he blessed, but the house he's in is blessed. And so they wanted him around. In Genesis 39 21, it says this. But while Joseph was there in prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him uh, favor in the eyes of the prison warden. He rose to the top of that. While Joseph was not with his family, while he was not speaking his own language, while he was with a, a, a foreign people in a foreign place, he was still blessed by God. Can we be blessed? Can God be honored? in the battle, in the struggle that we're on. Joseph answered the question, why are you here like this? He said, he said this, the scripture we read earlier, verse 45, chapter 45, verse 5. Here, back to this, it says, And now, do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here. 
Are you kidding? I can't wait. I've prayed every day. I'm going to get these dudes back. They're going to pay for this. I am going to rock them. And, it, and, and the higher I went up in the world, the more I would say, oh, this is going to give me my chance now. I'm going to be able to get back at those brothers of mine. But it never says he did that. It says, he says, do not be distressed. Do not be angry with yourselves. Then this guy learned how to be soft and caring and forgiving. I don't have the forgiveness gene. What about you? Buddy, you running me out of the road, I'm going to honk my horn. I'm going I'm I'm to beep at you. I'm going to bust her. I can't do that anymore. <laughs> I, I, I would want to just get back at them. I would just want to hold that. I would just want to can't wait to get my moment. But Joseph didn't. And because he didn't, now stay with me, because he didn't, God was able to save many. It goes on, it says, it says because it was to save uh, uh, the, the lives of, of God that sent me ahead of you. It was to save lives. That's why he had this. And over in, in, in Genesis 50, 20, it says, you intended harm to me. But God intended it for good to accomplish what is being done in the, li- in the saving of many lives. So I have a question for you. Do you think Jesus, once he got to be a little bit older in life, do you think Jesus ever said, I don't know why I'm here? Now think about that. We never would picture Jesus as, I'm not sure why I'm here. Jesus was on a mission Jesus was sent here on a mission for us. It, it's impossible for Jesus. Now, he said, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Jesus came with a mission, and he started about that mission even while people lied about him, even while people made fun of him, even, even while people left and just went away from him. All right, here's your, here's, here's your do, you, do, you think, uh, do you think Jesus ever said, I don't know why I'm here? Can we all just say no? Ready? He didn't, he never, he never said, I don't know why I'm here. Because he was in the grace and on mission from the Father. That's where I get messed up. Maybe you too. I lose my vision for what God's called me to be. And all the struggles and trials that go with it, I just need to take them. Not try to wiggle out of them, pray out of them. I'm going to get those dudes. I mean, can I just, can I just do what God put me to do and, and to be here? And for now, it's to drive a bus. It's to work with hospice. It's to be a coach. And for you, it's the things you're into. And when we do those things, God is blessed and people are saved. People people find their way. And so, do we feel like First Baptist Church uh, Tompkinsville is... Is, is doing what God wants us. Do we get up and say, we know what our vision is, what our ministry is? Well, every time I'm here, I see it. You guys are the friendliest folks ever, even with all this, this distancing thing. Man, you make people feel welcome. That's amazing. That's incredible. The mission. Here's the, here's the mission. Let's, let's, jump to, let's jump to Matthew 28. You, you've heard this, right? Let's remember our mission, church. Here we go. Here we go. When they saw him, they worshiped him. Verse 17, when they saw him, they worshiped him. Can I make sure that I worship God every single day? Can I put my eyes on scripture or get my ears on scripture? Can I make sure every day, every day, I'm going to see some scripture. I'm going to hear some scripture. I'm going to worship God. Now, it may be worshiping his nature as I drive across the county. It might be uh, worshiping him right here. Uh, we may be worshiping him in my car by myself at home. They worshiped him, but some doubted. We knew that. that. That was all the way through. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples. Now, who was he talking to? The disciples. Let me, let me help here. You can't make a disciple if you're not a disciple. We have to be disciples to make disciples. I can't teach a skill that I don't know in just life. I couldn't show you how to play the tuba. I don't know how. And so I can't do that. So he's saying to the disciples, go and make disciples. We sometimes flip this. We, it says go and make disciples. We say go and baptize them. Then make disciples. 
It says it might take a while. It might be a little bit of work. It might be some investment in time and effort and energy. It might, it might be that we have to make relationship with people before they can be baptized because we had to, make, we had to disciple them. That's a word we made up. Baptize them in the, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Should there be another day in my life should I even spend one more day getting up and saying, I don't know why I'm here? Should this church ever say, we don't know why we're here? But some churches, you know, unfortunately, some churches, you, you've seen it, I've seen it, they've lost their way. They don't know why they're there. They don't know, the people don't know why they're there. They don't know why they're there. This is hard times. Are all the churches going to restart? Some are not. It's not going to happen. And the ones that don't make it were probably the ones that say, I don't know why we're here. So that's the question. That's the question today for you and for me. Why am I here? Can I, can I now understand I need, I need to be ready to help someone else find Jesus if I'm a believer? If I'm not a believer yet, I've heard about it, I've thought about it, I've been thinking about it. Is, is today the day that you decide I want to make everybody know, and mostly God and me, Understand, I'm ready to talk about that. I'm ready to become a believer. I understand that my sin earned me death forever away from God. Do you know what hospice does? Hospice helps people at the end of life. Hospice helps people at the end of life. And as a chaplain, can you understand some of the conversations I get into at the end of life? Most people don't want to talk about other stuff, right? They want to talk about what's next and what's happening. The families want me to talk about with their loved one. Man, I'm, it, it, I, I'm praying and I'm talking with people and I'm fine. I mean, we're, we're getting down to the business. Why am I here? Why are you here? Why is First Baptist Tompkinsville here? What role do you play in that? Are you ever going to get up another day and go, oh, man, I just don't really like my circumstances? Well, if they're your maid, you can talk about God, you can get God to help you with it. But if it's God made, dig in and say, I'll take it, God. If you, you're believing in me, I'll believe in me too. You know, sometimes that's all it takes is a look, somebody to look at you and say, I believe in you. I believe in you. And God is saying to us, I believe in you. Go and make disciples. Go and make disciples. Maybe today's the day you want to make that. Your first time or renewal, I'm, I'm, I'm in. I understand again why I'm here. So as we come and we sing, as we come and we sing, let's just think about what God is saying to you and to me, why am I here? Why am I here?